And we're joined now by Labour's campaign coordinator, Shabana Mahmood. Uh, I'm assuming you are smiling this morning. It looks good so far, doesn't it, for Labour? However, you know, there are still areas where perhaps you could have hoped to have done better. I'm talking about the West Midlands, Dudley, that was one that you were hoping to do well in, Sandwell, uh, no real inroads into the black country as you might have hoped. No, I think this is a fantastic set of uh, results for us. And I think that they show that we are on course for a majority uh, Labour government at the next general uh, election. And I think if you look at uh, these results and map them onto uh, the constituencies that we need to be winning back uh, at that next general election, if we're going to get a Labour majority, then we'd be winning uh, in places like Stevenage, uh, Grimsby. Um, we'd also actually be winning both of the Dudley uh, seats. If you map the um, vote share onto the constituency, uh, we'd be winning both of those seats. So I'm very, very pleased uh, with the, this set of results. It's a very solid foundation for us to be building on as we look ahead to that next general election. And we are on course for a majority Labour government at that next general election. It's interesting because because what our analyst is saying that the, the the chances of Labour actually achieving what you're suggesting there and getting that swing is a huge mountain that you've got to climb. Uh, you're saying that you're confident that the results that we've had so far, and of course it's not the end of all these results coming in from the local elections, that's going to set you up with the basis to actually make that run and you're confident that you could be in government for the next general election? Uh, yes, look, I've never been complacent, and Keir, our, our leader Keir Starmer, has never been complacent uh, about the scale of the challenge that we face. Coming back from the 2019 general election result, which was one of our worst ever uh, defeats, so it's always been a very, very tough job for us to come back. But if you look at what these results are showing, map them onto the constituencies uh, that you know we need to win for a majority at the next general election. Some of these seats, uh, for example, these results show we'd be winning Dudley North and Dudley South. In yeah. those seats, we need a 15% swing to take those seats. And on these results, we'd be taking those seats. So under Keir's leadership, we are in these seats achieving the sorts of swings that we would need to deliver a majority Labour government. People wrote us off in 2019. But I think these results show uh, not only can we come back uh, in one term, we are on course for a majority, which nobody could have predicted uh, in 2019. Uh, interesting you bring up 2019, because, of course, the Conservatives did disastrously uh, are there. Theresa May apologised in the local elections. And then, of course, in the same year, Boris Johnson scored a huge uh, victory or a significant, very significant majority uh, in the general election. And Colin Rollins, the, 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 our expert, who you will be aware of, um, has said that actually there isn't the unambiguous swing, uh, having looked at the details so far at the moment, that Labour was getting, for instance, in the mid-90s, uh, you know, in 95, uh, which led, of course, to Tony Blair's big win in 97. So there's a long way to go, isn't there, for Labour, as you've said. And if Rishi Sunak can deliver on some of those national issues, which Conservative councillors are saying as what's done for them this time round, it could be a very different picture, couldn't it? Well, as I've said, we're not complacent. We know there's a long road between now and the general uh, election, uh, but it's important that we're making progress. And in some of these areas, we'd be taking seats that need a massive, massive swing for us to take them uh, in a general election, as I say. So that makes it a very, very solid base for us to, to build on. And I think for Rishi Sunak, the real question is, I mean, if he does go down to, you know, the sorts of numbers of losses of councillors uh, that we've been seeing, and of course, we've got to wait for all of the results to come in, that's a disastrous night. He'd have performed worse uh, than both Theresa May and uh, Boris Johnson. So I think there are real questions for Rishi Sunak to answer. And I think the real uh, sort of political uh, issue for him that's come up uh, because of these local elections is he hasn't spent a single day of this campaign talking about the number one issue facing households and families all over the country. That's a cost of living crisis. Your viewers uh, would tell any pollster that's the number one issue on their minds when they look at their household finances. And the Tories haven't got any answers. They crashed the economy. Rishi Sunak does not know how to fix it and these results are a damning indictment of Tory failure on the economy uh, and 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 their 13 years in power so I think there are big questions okay. uh, for Rishi Sunak to answer uh, can, can we ask a little bit about the campaign that you've run you've said that you're very proud of the positive campaign that you've run focused on the issues that matter most to voters but of course it's not been positive has it there's been attack ads run against the Conservatives against Rishi Sunak's in in a way that lots of people have considered really really distasteful and unnecessary in what is a very febrile atmosphere. Are we going to expect more of this sort of thing? Do you think these attack ads were a mistake? 
Not at all. We have been robustly holding the Tories to account for their 13 years uh, in government. And I'm afraid uh, we're not going to allow them to pull off the trick of changing their leader and then behaving as if all of the years previous that they've been in but government somehow don't matter But they're hardly positive, though, anymore. are they, Shabana Mahmood? It's you about, said it was a positive robustly... campaign that you'd run. That's, that's, that's not a positive tone to those We've been, we've been robustly and unashamedly holding the Tories to account for their very significant failures mm. on the criminal justice system, on the cost of living... And you consider that positive? Issues that matter to voters and then setting out our alternative, our, our positive plan uh, to give the nation uh, its future back. It's a combination of the two things that we've, we've been doing. We are absolutely unapologetic for holding the Tories to account. It's actually their track record. You should have them on defending that track record. Oh, they will. won't, of course, oh, because we it's will. indefensible. Don't worry about that. And it is an indefensible track record. Oh, we will. I mean, Sir Keir Starmer um, doubled down on saying that he was behind those attack ads. Are you convinced that he, as a man and as a leader, has won the heart? Because if you look at the polls, your party is much more popular than he is. It, it's the leadership of Keir Starmer that has got us back on the pitch after a defeat in 2019 where people were writing us off for a generation uh, or more. And not only has he got us back on the pitch, but actually um, we have been taking a positive case uh, to the country for the things that a Labour government will do to help them through this cost of living crisis, to get the economy growing again, to get the nation its future back. That is down to the leadership of Keir Starmer. These results are a vindication of the changes that he has made in the Labour Party to make us face the voters of this country once again to speak to their priorities to have the answers to their problems and these results are showing that we are winning those voters over okay Shabana Mahmood thank you very much for joining us this morning